Hey guys, I'm Dustin with JP. I'm here at World Speed in Talladega, Georgia or Alabama? Alabama. We're in Alabama, bro. Alabama. I, and I've been here a couple of days and I still don't know where I'm at. <laughs> Anyways, hey, I got Team JP Shooter, Steve Foster. How's it going, bro? Good, Dustin. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Just uh, we, got, we have beautiful weather here. Oh, it's been perfect. So a lot of times when we go to matches, we go home and we got like crazy raccoon eyes going Oh, yeah. Around. The crazy back, of, back, back of the legs, dude. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. And this yeah. one, like, you're wearing pants in the morning, wearing a hoodie because yeah. it's got some wind. So it's been beautiful out here. Um, but yeah, it's just great to, to be back out with, with people after the whole year off from COVID. Oh, you know? yeah. A lot of matches were canceled. A lot of people didn't show up to the matches. For sure, there. for sure. So it's just great to be back out here. It's great to see you. Yeah, it's How great you, to see you, man. Yeah, man. How have you been? Oh, I've been busy. Work's been busy. School's been busy with the kids. And Kids are uh, still out of school. My wife, thank goodness, been homeschooling the kids, keeping them safe, and uh, getting ready to put them back at it. So it's been between shooting and work and the kids. Man, it's been busy. It's been busy, brother. You know how it goes. <laughs> Dude, trust me, I know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. yep. I had kids and all that stuff, and it's been absolutely crazy. But um, so, what have you been well, like? What did you do during your time off and and try to stay in this uh, competitive mode of like, hey? I've got matches coming up, right. COVID's going to end, i got to keep going. What have you been doing to stay in that zone? So what happened at the end of last year, or towards the beginning of last year, we had the Georgia State Seal Challenge Championship, and then all the matches in the country shut down after March. And so uh, there was a couple of matches in Tennessee that opened up, some local matches. So Chris Barrett and I and a couple other shooters, we traveled all around uh, you know, the southeast. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of major matches started opening up in, in uh, May, June, and July. So I traveled to a lot of places that oh, I don't okay. typically shoot. So shot the Area 5 match up in Indiana, shot the Michigan State Steel Challenge Championship. It was cool, man, getting to see other people you know you're friends with people online and all that kind of stuff got a pretty good following yeah and to get to talk to people and put a jp in their hands and right. you know shooting uh subpoena our ammo that kind of thing boy it really uh really really helped build some relationships so so it's cool so for you shooting didn't stop but like no. for for three gunners for some long range stuff going on uh even just some mainly like some uspsa pcc matches yeah a lot of that stuff did die down so it's cool yeah. to see that some of the stuff was able to like keep going and, yeah. and get some stuff out there for sure that's cool for yeah. sure yeah so um how's your season go so we're we're in april the season's still young but you are at world speed he's coming in here yeah. all right guys so um we've had t we've had a couple interruptions here so we are in the hunters hd gold Booth. Well, it's a booth, it's, it's, but it's a van. Yeah, it's the Magical Mystery Tour van. What did you call it yesterday? <laughs> oh, you going to put me on the spot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Brian reached out to me and said, hey, I got this Magical Mystery Tour thing, and it's going to be a van, and I'm like, like the mystery machine, like Scooby-Doo? Man, he didn't talk to me for like, I think like three weeks, for yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, yeah, the van started popping out, and... I don't know why I got so emotional yeah. about it. So I, I I haven't brought it up like six times this weekend. So so we definitely want to give a, a big uh, a huge shout out to Brian and the crew over at Hunters HD Gold yeah. for allow for allowing us to film these videos here. I mean it's right. it's really hard at certain matches. It's really hard yeah. to find time to sit down with with shooters and do an interview. Sure, sure. Um, so this being right here in Tent City, where all of the vendors are. Has been really great for us. Come in here. We've he's got some uh, soundproof panels in yeah, there, thing, yeah. and it's also been and right behind this wall, they, they've he's got a a rack of guns. Oh yeah, and then he's got pistols hanging. And he's sure, got sure. all of his glasses. So it's a phenomenal setup. It really right. is a great setup. Yeah. Um, but with that being in here, nobody can see in here, so we do get that's a right. Bit, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> some anyways, hey, thank you, Brian, and the crew over at Hunters HD Gold for allowing us to do the interview in here. We really appreciate. All your help and all your support absolutely um, in general yeah for sure um so anyways let's get back to it i was talking about you know prs shooters three gunners that, yeah. they're really having a hard time getting out there to shoot sure. and um you know that that was difficult so it's, it's really cool to see that you guys were able to keep up you know stay up and, and run and and do your thing yeah and it's been unique because in the southeast uh, we're at the world speed shoot uh, it's here in April. I, I think the people that live in the South have a little bit of an advantage because the last World Speed shoot got pushed off due to COVID. So it was in September, and now we're back here in April. So uh, I'm feeling feeling pretty good this weekend. Yeah. Having a good time, and it's great because a lot of people, I think uh, 645 guns are shooting this weekend. That's yeah. a lot of a lot of people. Now I want to throw this out there for everybody that's new to the sport, and we've got a lot of new people that jumped into sure, firearms sure, this sure. past year. So Steel Challenge, 
When he talks about how many guns? 645. So 645. That doesn't mean there's 645 competitors. Yeah. That's just, that's how many guns are spread out across the division. So how many divisions are you shooting? So I'm shooting four divisions this weekend. Most people, I think the average is about two and a half or so. Two and a half? Two and a half uh, uh, divisions per shooter. How you do t- oh, you're just breaking it down in Yeah, general. yeah, just in, just in general. So not like two and a half? No, not like two and a half. It's like they're only shooting half mass yeah, like DQ? Cutting a gun in half? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's probably close to 300, you know, 275 people that will come here this weekend. Yeah. That's a cool match. There's a lot of people here. And yeah. one of the cool things about uh, Steel Challenge compared to a lot of other matches, in the, in the match or, di- or other styles of shooting, mm-hmm. and that's starting to change, but here at Steel Challenge, you have a lot of people that just show up. Oh, yeah. To to hang out and see what's going yeah, on. And you, for sure. you actually have a big um, amount or a large amount of female shooters. Yeah, female and junior shooters, absolutely. And the it's cool, really cool to see. Yeah, and the cool part about Steel Challenge, and I know you get this in USPSA and some of the other disciplines, but you've got literally the best shooters in the country are here this weekend. So if you want to hang out with uh, some of the best people and all that kind of stuff, say hey to John Sorry. Scout and everybody. Pardon me. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> see you, John. <laughs> so, see, there you go. So, yeah. Shooting USA even jumped in on this. I mean, uh, when you got Steve Foster in here in the mystery machine. Uh, <laughs> Should have locked the doors, brother. <laughs> things, things, things get crazy. So, but anyways, hey. So you were speaking of, you want to come out here and meet some really cool people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. John Scouting's here yeah, of Shooting absolutely. USA. Yeah. And that you, you can't really get much bigger in the industry no. than, than the scouting. Right? Yeah. So. And, and you know, it, we'll get there, I'm sure, but this little gem behind us, I mean, this is where this gun is being debuted at the World Speed Shoot. Oh, he's just jumping right I there. am. I can't. I, I shot it yesterday, brother. Man, that I, thing is... I was just trying woo, to keep it, man. I was just woo. trying to keep it hid. So, we did a video <laughs> yeah. on your social media. Yeah. Threw some stuff up on the JP social media. Yeah. That thing's blown up. Oh, it's out of control right now. I think we're over 10,000 views somewhere in there. Yeah. and we, right, dro- well, we dropped it last night. All right, so here's what we're talking about. Yep. We have the JP5. That baby is awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, so... Um, this isn't really typically what you would see in a, a build sweet. for for Steel Challenge. Um, you know, it's Steel Challenge. You guys like to run lighter rifles. Yeah, so yeah you, for sure. When you're looking at the barrels now with the GMR, a lot of guys are yeah. running the ultralight barrel. Yeah, that's but what I'm But we have running. a full 14.5 inch pin and weld barrel. Yeah. We've got the Ilmla Kangard. Yeah, which we is have, lighter. Mm-hmm. Yep. We've yeah. got the JP5 upper and lower receiver. Yeah. We have the JP5 SES. Yep. And then you got your standard buffer and stock in here. Yeah. And when you picked it up, what'd you say? Man. So when I picked it up, I was like, man, this thing's light. And I wish we had a scale to weigh it, because if that thing weighs five pounds, I'd be surprised. So, so Even you, with the 14 and a half. So inch here's the deal. When, when I get back to, to JP, I will weigh this, and I'll okay. pull it up on the screen right here. Yep. So everybody can, yeah. can get an idea. Yeah. But it's super light. It is super light. Super Very light. impressive. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if there's a gun out there that's lighter. I'm sure there may be, but the the magic in this, outside of the lightness of the gun, because some people like a little bit heavier gun because it helps tame some of the recoil. Yeah. But that operating system right there, we uh, we did a video and ran my ran my ammo through it, and we used uh, those lockers to, to tune it to. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and we'll we'll throw that all up it's on crazy. there. But I'm gonna it's shut crazy. this door. So give me one second. Okay. So we're back. So. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to steal video from um, Steve's camera here, and we'll throw sure. that up for B-roll so everybody can see what we're talking about. Yeah. But this rifle is literally a game changer. It, re- it, it really is a game changer. Yeah. Um, there's not going to be... I, I'm just trying to think of a, um, a rifle out there that we really think, as a PCC rifle out there, that's going to be able to compete with this. Oh, no, it's... If you get the ammo tuned to the locker, oh, it's 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 a game changer. Right. I mean, it is. And I don't shoot USPSA, but I was double tapping targets this far apart. I mean, as fast as I could pull the trigger. I mean, it was it was crazy. It was yeah. Crazy. Um. And, and here's the deal. So a lot of people are maybe watching this and you're trying to figure out what you're talking about tuning. So if you're sure. familiar with an AR-15, you can you can tune the AR-15 off the gas block. Right. 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 So the lockers that are in the bolt, mm-hmm. you can actually, they all have some different angles. So we can fine tune yeah. the delay of this rifle. Yep. 
Yep, so it absorbs it, and it's the amount of pressure that it takes to spin it to open, correct? It doesn't even spin. It just it, comes it, back. Because it's just a direct blow, right? Okay. So it doesn't rotate like our bolt. So yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, so there's some angles on there, and the straighter the angles are, there's a whole lot of math that goes in there sure. that I'm not smart enough to figure sure. out. Maybe you are, but I let engineers do that. But right, 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 right. The magic that they did <laughs> is phenomenal. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. So, uh, what was your re your first reaction when you shot this? Now, you've been shooting the JT GMR-15 and GMR-13, right? Yeah. For years. Four years, probably. Okay. Somewhere in there. So, what was your reaction, like, after you shot the JT? I mean, it, it's... This is a G-rated show where I tell people really what I thought. Yeah. This thing is... It, it's... It's unbelievable. We might be PG-13. PG-13? <laughs> We've got a lot of kids on our team, man, so i got to keep it G-rated. Yeah. It just... The dot doesn't even move, you know. Sometimes even if you've got the right SCS, because I run three tungsten and two stainless, I'm running about 113, 114 power factor, and you know you may get just a little bit of impulse. This thing kicks like my 22. I mean, it's you know that it's cycling, but the dot's not even yeah. moving. So he's talking about the three tungsten, two stainless steel. He's talking, about his, on, he's talking about his SES is a short stroke system that runs in the GMR 15, yep, yep. which shortens the stroke of the bolt. Yep. Uh, in this guy, we have uh, the way I look at it is though it's its own SES. I run a lot of 308. Yep. And the SES looks uh, re I mean, very similar to the 308. The, the, the and SES there's only there. there's only two stainless on there. There's two stainless, so yep. it's an aluminum slider, two stainless. Yep. Absolutely love it. Right. Um, and I shot it, felt like a 22. And you know, after posting that video last night, I had people come up to me and said, "Oh, I thought that you know that locker thing and all that kind of stuff was going to be really complicated to take apart. You're going to need Allen wrenches and this and that." They're like, "Steve, it took you like 20 seconds to take it apart and put it back together again." It took me longer to pop the disconnect pin out. That's correct. Than it no, that's true. <laughs> no, it that's is true. true. I know it is that's true. true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, uh, you know, we run our micro fit pins. The thing was super yeah. tight, which yep. is great, but it yep. took me longer to get yep. that open yep. than it did to get the, the bolt changed around and everything. For it, it, so, it really is amazing. Yeah. And when people people shoot it, I know you've had a lot of people out there shooting it today based on the video last night. Man, there's not a single person that's like, hey, Steve, how much and when can I get one? Yeah. yeah that, it's, that's it's great, and that's a great question. No, you want me to throw that out? I don't know, man. I can make up some stuff, but... Uh, yeah, what would you say? Jesse or John Paul would be mad at me. <laughs> no, so in all reality, we're looking at quarter four, right? So yeah. uh, we're in 2021, so quarter four, 2021. Sure. Um, you know, I, I'd like to say October, right? October is the beginning of quarter four. It'd be great. Right. It might be mid, mid quarter four. It might be late quarter four. A lot of it depends sure. on production time and what's going on and. Right. You know, the just kind of where we're at with civil unrest and COVID and everything, production yeah. time's a little little longer. Yep. Um, but when it hits, when it hits the market, it's going to be phenomenal. The other question that I, well, what about the MSRP? Can you say that or share that? Or yeah, not? so right right now, okay, we're in April. Right. So um, if you're watching this video and it's October or December or January of 2022, right, right. go back and check online. Um, but as of right now, uh, they're guessing around twenty-eight to three thousand somewhere okay. in that ballpark. Oh yeah, they'll you won't be able to build them fast enough. I'm I'm serious. That thing is yeah. awesome. Yeah. The other question that I got a lot of based on feedback from people watching the video last night: Can I convert my current JP GMR fifteen to this system? You cannot. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So um, it is completely a. Uh, proprietary system so sure. the, even the barrel the barrel the barrel extension that's on the GM, or the 9 millimeter barrel is different that's why yeah, we couldn't convert. put an ultralight yep. barrel in yep. here um, so there's, there's just a lot of things going on but it is its own uh, upper receiver own lower receiver right. the lower receiver is ambidextrous I saw that that's awesome so ambidextrous um, the the bolt carrier by itself is, is by itself now they may eventually uh, Throw some kits out there for the SES, but as of right now, there's just going to be the one SES. You sure. can change. You could run a one tungsten yeah, weight on there, yeah. right? But And you can change the springs to do some more fine-tuning. But as of right now, the only thing that's going to go on there from a GMR would be your handguard. Right. Uh, buffer tube. Right. Your JP trigger. Sure. And your stock. Yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. You guys did a great job. Yeah, so the, the team at JP has been working forever on this project. Right. 
And I, I mean, there were times people would show up to the range and these guys are shooting it and they'd put it in the case and nobody could see it. So they kept it really, yeah, I mean, hush, like hush hush. hush. And yeah. the first time anybody really started seeing about it was in January. At the, I believe they released a bulletin with Josh Fralick yeah. uh, testing a prototype that he has out. So technically, sure, this sure, is sure. the number three prototype. Right. A lot of changes have happened to this compared to Josh's, but they're, I mean, it's. It's rolling. It is, and the reaction I'm getting from people here at this match has been phenomenal. People are coming up, and they kind of balk at the price, and then they shot it, and they're like, okay, it, it makes <laughs> can you sense. Take, can you take my credit card right now? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's... it's. Well, your, your boy... Uh, with... Uh, yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, still target paint. Larry? Larry, thank you. Oh, Man, yeah. I, I can only think of his last name. Yeah. He did what he did last time I showed up with something brand new. <laughs> He took it home with he him. He tried to buy it from oh, me right yeah. there. And oh, I was like, yeah. you can't. He goes, I want it. And I was like, you can't. It's a demo. He goes, yep, that's why I want it. I said, no. <laughs> not happening. Yeah. Let's just get you a new one. Yeah. Um, yep. So it, it's really cool. It's a phenomenal deal. And here's a, it's not here to replace the GMR-15. Sure. The GMR-15 is a, a, a fantastic platform. It, it does everything you want. It's got the reliability of everything. But... When you look at it, there is a price point difference, all right? Sure. GMR is going to be, let's just say, rough numbers right now. April of 2021 is like $17.99. You're right, sure. You know, things will be different when you're watching this video, of course. But that's that's a really good starting price. A lot Absolutely. of the, a lot of the AR, uh, 9mm AR, pla AR platforms are starting to come in at $1,200. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be $17.99 with the reliability that it Absolutely. has and all the custom stuff out there. Phenomenal. Absolutely. But now... Let's go up another level, and that's yeah. what JP does. Yeah, for sure. And that's when we come in with the JP5, and it's great. And yeah. they've already got ideas coming out for even more stuff, so they yeah. will come out with a side charger, which that's when I will buy is I Absolutely. that side charger. Absolutely. I'm a side charger guy, though. I know you are. I know you are. Yeah. That's why I got the one that I have. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's right. Um, so, all right, so you've shot this rifle. You've shot 22. You've shot the GMR. Mm -hmm. A kid this week with Rimfire mm -hmm. shot a... 53 point whatever 97 97 yeah. that's a big number I don't know but 53.97 I don't even know how to do the math but it has to be almost a perfect run it's it's pretty close it's classified time where if he shot a personal best on every stage is right around 50 so to be that close to his classified time and that's with an iron sight oh my goodness now that's, that's amazing that's a total of 53 seconds right yep okay yep so my question to you, and I've asked other people, sure. after shooting this, can this get down there? Oh, absolutely. All day. Crazy? All day. Okay, yep. so before anybody shot this, people were like, oh, PCC cannot get any yep. lower than the, what, 58 is what they were saying? Yeah, and I, I think up until, you know, what was it, three years ago, I would shot the fastest time in the world with my GMR-15, my PCC. It was faster than any other PCC that was ever shot. And consistently, I'd beat rimfire times. Okay. It, it, and I think this has the potential to beat that to beat that fifty three ninety seven number. Could you imagine twenty twenty two world speed? Somebody puts up, let's just say, fifty four of the PCC. Oh, it it blow people's minds. Yeah. But I, I think that's that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. like, all day. So your boy Chris Barrett, uh, part of Team JP. Yep. I just I got some slow mo. I'll throw it up of him sure. running this thing, and he's shooting this thing so fast, it's so flat, and staying on target. Yeah. Four of the, I mean, as it was ejecting out, brass was still in the air. There yeah. were four. Oh, yeah. And that's the other thing. I don't know what the cyclic rate or the how, how fast it cycles, but, you know, I don't have as fast of a trigger finger as some of those guys. Yeah. And I was throwing four or five in the air. Just I, It just, it's like a, it has the feeling of a short, short stroke, if you will. Yep. And it just, it, it comes back so, so quick and on target. Yeah. So uh, I was just at a PRS class and, and everything, we're moving everything around because we're talking about the bolt. When you rack it, all the recoil, we want the recoil to be coming straight back. Yep. Um, and, and I've always known, like, you're looking for recoil to be coming straight back, but everybody's always trying to control everything here. Yeah, yeah. This rifle, for the first time, I think everybody finally understands a well-tuned yeah. rifle yep. comes straight back. Exactly. It doesn't go in the air. Exactly. It just cut, literally comes straight back. A lot of people talk about that return. This thing doesn't It doesn't move, so it doesn't really return. It just stays flat. Yeah, it doesn't have to return because, yeah. yeah, like you're saying, it doesn't, doesn't move. move. Yeah, that's yep. awesome. Yeah, it's cool. All right, man, so what, what's in store for you for the rest of the year? Man, got major matches coming up all over the place. So there's Area 3 coming up. Signed up to shoot uh, Corey K's big match yeah. over Texas, Area 4. Match. 
So, yeah. uh, team shooter, Corey K. Yeah. Uh, he shoots, I mean, everything. He um, does, too. I, whatever, dude. The guy shoots every division. Yep. Check him out. He's yep. a phenomenal shooter. Yep. But, yeah, he's got his very first field challenge match he's kind of throwing. Yeah, him. Area 4. I think there was, I talked to him on the phone here not too long ago, but it's been a minute since they've had uh, yeah. a, a, an area match. So, there's matches all over the country. So, uh there's, a, it's funny. We got some matches. Hey, Steve, man, you gonna come shoot my match? I'm like, look, there's so many matches to shoot. Which if, is if I get a JP five, I'll that's be there. That's right. That's right. I'll be that's there right. to win them all. That's right. That's right, man. <laughs> awesome. But, well, hey, man. Um, I know you gotta get to shooting. So thank you for taking time to get in here and talk to me. Uh, real quick thing, let everybody know where they can find you and start following you. And, and so as soon as you get your JP five, they can see it. Yeah, out on uh, Facebook, Steve Foster Competitive Shooter. Out on Instagram, Foster Shooting. I've got a. All other social media, such as uh, I uploaded this morning, uh, that video up on YouTube, because some yep. people pay attention to YouTube, not everybody's on Facebook, and yeah, come check me out. If you got any questions or need a discount code, something like that, reach out to me, I'll hook you up. And you got a podcast too, right? Yep, Steel Target Paint Podcast, absolutely. All right, check that out. So, hey, uh, Steel Challenge, phenomenal sport to get into, especially if you're just getting oh, yeah. into the sport. Absolutely. You shoot rimfire pistol, rimfire rifle, yep. whatever, yep. Yep. PC, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's awesome. Phenomenal people here. Hunter's Asian Girls got plenty of guns for you to borrow. Yep. Steve's got plenty of JPs for you to borrow. Absolutely. Um, so check out Steve. Check out JP. Thanks for having us, uh, taking time to watch, and we'll see you guys at the range.